Khan International Mindset and Transformation Masterclass. With different teachers, different mentors, different professors from across the globe. Interesting, informative, and life transforming. It must watch Masterclass. Yeah, professor. I can hear you, doctor. Yes. Uh, prof, I can hear you. Okay, that's good. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Thank we you. want to, okay, sir. We want to invite our professor, honorable patron of Yes You Can International, Professor Ambassador Engineer Oyinche Promise Obina, is happily married to HRH Ogweti Ambassador Oyencha Oyenche Priska Ogenchi and their marriage is blessed with six royal descendants. He is the founder and international president of Transparent Leadership Initiative International, the most supportive NGO in sub Saharan Africa on transparency. He is the chairman and CEO of Fulfilled Group of Companies, comprises Fulfilled Engineering Constructions, Fulfilled Agricultural Practice Limited, Fulfilled Logistics Services Limited, Fulfilled Marine Services Limited, Fulfilled International Academy. Chairman and CEO of Eze Ikemba Integrated Farm and Resorts. Chairman and CEO of Royal Guide Security Service. Chairman and CEO of Nastogen, where I am also part of it, Multi Multipurpose Investment Limited. He is the grandparent and, um, sorry, he is the grand patron and founder of H.A. Windows, Widows, an orphan foundation. He's also the grand patron of Restore Ibo Film Forum. He is the grand patron, the Narrow Road Women Intercessors of Nigeria. And he is the national president by Association of Surface Tank Oil and Gas Retailer of Nigeria and appointed as the International Royal Trustee of the World Peace and Climate Change Diplomatic Organization. Our wonderful patron is also the Eze, Eze Ikemba Onye Isiala Ulakwa performed 2021 at Agurisi Ancient King. Ethnicity River State of Nigeria. He is the national president mm -hmm. of Nasrogen. And I'm happy to say that he is our grandparent of, yes, grandparent, well, parents, we can call it parents as well, grand patron of Yes, You Can International. So permit me this afternoon to welcome our own patron to share with us with a very important topic that is so dear to my heart and that is the mindset of tradition and religion so you are welcome sir thank you thank you my beloved um, I am most honored to be your midst once more. Today is a blessed day because we are sharing a topic that is very important in our lives as individuals. 
and also our lives as a, corp uh, a corporate um, organization or body. Like you rightly said, I am His Royal Excellency, King Professor, Ambassador in Jino Nyeche Promise of Ina. The SE Kemba One, Oni Shalo Lakwa Grishi, Asian Kingdom, Eche Ethnicity River State. The Supreme Commander of Supreme Council of African Ancestral Kings and Royalty, which is the most you know, focal point of our discourse today, our tradition and religion as Africans, as Asians, as Europeans, as Americans, as Indians, as all continents. What is our tradition? in line with religion and what is our mindset of our tradition and religion so in line with the time factor i have been scheduled to share these very topical issues i want to bring us royal blessings from the ancestral stool of eze ikemba one when you shall as a custodian of tradition and culture and also strong and dogged promoter of religion I am a character that is dipole in nature. I promote culture, I promote tradition, I promote religion, because we all are traditional beings and we are also religious beings. So having said this, I bring us real blessings from the land of each ethnicity in River State, mm -hmm. South South Nigeria, West African country in the African continent. I want to assure us that after this discourse, we will have another mindset towards what tradition really means as regards to religion. However, we need to take the bull by the horn by championing the atopical understanding of this topic. I know we have representatives from all the continents of the world, and I want to appreciate those who has you know, kept to time to you know, listing under the auspices of my voice on these topical issues. Basically, the two very important keynotes on this discourse is tradition and religion. And I want us to understand the meaning of these very keywords before we begin to relate it to our daily lives as individuals. And before begin to relate it as our daily, into our daily lives as a corporate being. Now, by the Oxford dictionary definition of tradition, it goes along to say that tradition is the transmission of custom or belief from generation to generation. Now, listen carefully. Transmission of custom or belief from generation to generation is tradition. And in another way, it says that tradition is a doctrine of belief to have you know, divine authority through, mark this word, a doctrine of belief to have divine authority through, are you with me? Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. I hope you are getting me, I hope you are getting me clearly. Yes, yes, yes. I want everybody to pick his or her pain and note this very key point because we are going to relate the points I'm making now. This is a lecture. This is a lecture. And I want us to take back home something so that we can be better informed. Because when you are not properly informed, you are deformed. And when you are deformed, you cannot grow as a superhuman. Now, let's get back to it. I said the key, the B part of it says that tradition is a doctrine. Believed to have divine authority. But one thing that is noted by the author of the is that it is not in the scriptures. Auction dictionary, if you have a dictionary, you can link up with me to find out what I'm saying. The A part says that tradition is a transmission of custom or belief from generation to generation. 
Now, the people say that tradition is also a doctrine of belief to have divine authority. But it stated that it is not captured in the scriptures. And we know what the scripture is. The scripture is a whole label. Now, let's go back to religion. Because I know my topic is centered on the mindset of tradition and religion. So I've been able to define tradition. Now let's look at religion. Now by the same Oxford Dictionary states that religion is the belief and worship of a superhuman controlling power. The belief and worship of a superhuman controlling power. Now, the B part says, if we go down a little to that, he said, especially a personal God, a personal God or gods. I hope you are picking a point now. That religion is the beliefs and worship of a superhuman controlled power or controlling power, a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods. Now, this, the big part of it says that religion, uh, the religion is a particular system of faith and worship. A particular system of faith and worship. Now, the CPAT says that it is a pursuit or interest followed with great, followed with great divination. Now, it could be said that it is followed with great devotion. When you are devoted to something, it is also a divination. Now, it is often said that to what you believe works for you. Now, this is the linking point now. Now, what we are discussing today is mindset of tradition and religion. Mindset of tradition and religion. Now, before I come to lecture us on the mindset, I want to go back a little by my pos personal position. I am, a relig I am religious about my tradition. Can we say that now? Let all of us say it together. I am religious about my tradition. Can we respond I together? About I am religious about my tradition. I am religious. I, am religious. I, want, I want the whole world to say it after me. I am religious about my tradition. I am religious. Perfect. Let's now say the second part of it that says, I keep to the religion, I mean, I keep to the tradition of my religion. I keep to, I the, keep to the tradition of my religion. I, I keep, keep to, to the, the tradition, tradition, of, the tradition my religion. of my religion. Can we note these things? Because they are very important. The number one personal discovery I have made about traditional religion is this. Now let's go back again to say, I am religious about my tradition. I am religious, I am religious about, about my, about my tradition. Tradition. religion and also my tradition. Perfect. Now the big part says, I keep to the tradition of my religion. I keep to my tradition of my, my religion. religion. I keep to the tradition. I keep to the tra tradition of my religion. I keep, I keep to, to my tradition, tradition of my, my religion. religion. <laughs> now, after making these affirmative statements, can you now say that there is a difference between tradition and religion? I want us to respond. Yes. Yes, there Can is difference. Can we say that there's a difference between 
since I said I'm a legion, now let me come to the mindset where I will expose this secret to us to discover that there is no difference between tradition and religion. Now, go back to the definition of tradition. Tradition is the transmission of custom or belief from, tradition, from generation to generation. Now, let's go back to the first definition of religion. Why religion is the belief and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods. Now, if tradition says that by its definition that it is the transmission of custom and belief, and religion is capturing belief, by the definition of religion, it says that it is the belief and worship. What tradition is the transmission of belief? That means religion is an integral part of tradition. And that is why I said in my speech last week, Saturday, during my book launch with the, 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 the uh, orthodox and traditional medicine outfit, I said that tradition is the foundation of religion. Tradition yeah. is the foundation of religion. Why do I say so? Tradition is the foundation of religion in the sense that tradition is the driving force, is the engine room that projects religion. By the division that talks about transmission, transmission means movement. It means motion. It means action. So tradition is the action of religion. Because it says that it is the transmission of custom or belief. Why religion is that belief that tradition is transmitting? Are we on the same page now? I want response. I want responses because I am yes. lecturing people and I'm, yes. I'm not responding. I'm not lecturing dead woods, I'm lecturing human beings. And we must communicate. Communication is a key point of edu educational system of communication. So you must communicate and get responses. If you are not understanding me, note your question. I am here to answer your questions. Now take this point. In tradition and religion, there is belief. Now, but the belief comes in different points of action. Now, tradition is transmitting your belief. Let's take it that you have a belief, which all of us believe, in Christ. Now, you worship Christ as an image of God because Christ is not different from God. You say, you cannot go to my father except through me. Meaning that God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. He came and died in his, in, 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 in his own image. Christ is an image of God that came and sacrificed because God sent his son as an image. We are ancestral beings of our ancestors. Christ is an ancestral being of God. As we are ancestral being of our fathers and great, great, great grandfathers. These are synonymous. They are inseparable. Now, the point is, the daily worship we keep the daily belief we keep in Christ or in any other system of worship in Prophet Muhammad or in the Hundis or in any other belief, that daily activity that we keep, that daily human function that we keep, that daily activity
activities. You wake up in the morning, you know you are going to pray to God. You go to church, you read your Psalms, you read your hymns, you pray. Priest is a tradition. It's a tradition. When once you came to a doctrine, a doctrine of belief to have a divine authority is tradition. So when once you are in the church or in the in the mosque or anywhere you are worshiping, according to a doctrine, you are keeping to a tradition. You are keeping to a tradition, whether you like it or not. The tradition of Africans is different from the tradition of the Indians, the Asians, the Europeans. Because our geographical postulation differs. Tradition projects culture. And religion is also culture. Why I said that tradition is the foundation of religion is this. I am born into my family as an ancestral being because my father was born by my grandfather and my father was born by my great-grandfather and my great-grandfather was born by my great-great-grandfather, meaning that there is an ancestral lineage being protected by my existence. So we all are ancestral beings. We all, every human is an ancestral being. Ancestry means broad replication, broad lineage. Now, as ancestral beings, we are born into a family that hails from a community, that hails from a town, that hails from a local authority, that hails from a province. Now, in that province, in that town, in that community, there is a pattern of livelihood. The way the people dress, the language they speak, the food they eat, the kind of houses they build, the religious worships they align themselves with are part of their culture. And which culture is the totality of tradition? Now, when you look at the tradition of the people, what are those cultural practices? What are those things they do on daily basis, individually and collectively as a family or a community? This forms their tradition. And that belief they have in unity of purpose is their religion. Let us be truthful to ourselves. The belief they have in themselves, how they pray, how they unite, how they interrelate, there is something that connects them. It's like a husband and wife. When you meet somebody, you fell in love. When you fell in love, the love begins to envelop. You begin to understand yourself. That is what life is all about. So something connects you, which is love. So love is a tradition. Because it has a modus operandi. When once you are not keeping to the modus operandi of love, you are falling out of love and there will be crisis. There will be division, there will be divorce, there will be separation. So we must understand that tradition and religion is one. There's no difference. Why this understanding must be taken into keen consideration is because the transmission force of religion is tradition. Mm -hmm. And the belief of tradition is religion. So I said in my just portion that tradition is the foundation of religion, while religion is the perfection of tradition. Tradition is the foundation of religion, while religion is the perfection of tradition. Now, let us take it into practicality. 
I am not born by religion. I am born through tradition. Now, when I am born, I begin to grow. Now, when I grow, I am being taught how to be a responsible man through religion. It is religion that molds the character of an individual. It is religion that makes you a perfect being. Tradition brings you out, showcases you, identifies you, classifies you. Tradition projects you, identifies you, and classifies you. I am dressed as an African ancestral king today because that is my tradition. So tradition has identified me. If I look at someone on the screen, I know who is from India because of the marks, the mode of dressing, and everything. I know you are from Brazil, I know from India, I know from Asia, because when I look at you, I identify you. So tradition identifies you. Tradition is the definition of a human. Tradition defines you. Your language is tradition. Your mode of dressing is tradition. Your appearance is tradition. Now, there is this aspect of you that makes you a perfect being. One, are you honest? Are you sincere? Are you truthful? Are you reliable? Are you firm? Are you proactive? Are you wise? Are you reasonable? Are you accommodating? Do you show love? Are you compassionate? These are the things religion imputes in you. When you lack these things, remember what the scripture says, that the fruits of the spirit is A, B, C, D. Where does he call it the fruit of the spirit? I will say in my own times, the fruits of religion, the products of religion. Because without a tree, there'll be no fruit. So we are all trees, and these trees are traditional products. They're products of tradition. So when the tree gets into maturity, it begins to bear fruit. Why does it bear fruit? Because religion has molded the perfection of tradition. I am Ezekiel Bawano Nisha Lulakwa Bishi. I am known globally today because my tradition has projected me and religion has perfected me to understand what life is all about and to educate others into the vision of reality. There is no gain saying, there is no deceit in life. Lies don't really last long. Lies are temporary. The truth is what stays for generations. Before the invent and advent of colonial invasion in Africa, we are a people under one God, the creator. We call it Chi Okike. Chi Okike means the God that creates. And it's only one God that creates. When we gather in our town halls, we pray to Chi Okike. We lift our hands and our eyes onto the sun and we pray to Chi Okike for protection, for blessings, for life, for fruitfulness. We pray to only one God, Chi Okike. And when the white man came to Africa, they talked about the God that creates. In their own language, we don't know what is English. In Africa, we don't know what is English. And there's no African that is a perfect English spokesperson. When I make mistake in English language, you cannot hold me to it because it's not my language, it's a borrowed language. But when I make mistake in my own language, I am liable to pay some penalties because I am an ancestral being. I must speak my language in totality of it. But when I make mistake in English language, you cannot hold me to it. And if you are from an English speaking country and you make mistake in my language, 
I will laugh over it. Because I cannot hold you to it. It's not your language. It's a borrowed language. If I come to UK and bring Igbo language, or a Chile language for you to speak, can you speak it? So why must you force me to speak your own? Why if I make mistake in your own, you are annoyed with me? Do you have that right? You don't have that right. Because I decide to speak whatever language I chose to speak. Why? It is not my tradition. It is not my tradition. It is a borrowed tradition. It is a borrowed language. When you feel your phone, they say, mother tongue, you feel it. Now they say second language, you feel it. So why are you feeling, not feeling English as your mother tongue? The Indians have their language. The Asians have their language. Every continent has their language. Every tribe, ethnicity have their language. Your language is your uniqueness, is your identity, is you. So don't ever, don't ever say your language for any other language. If you do so, you have lost your originality. You have lost your tradition. You have lost your religion. There is no religion that is as perfect as any. Every religion is equal because it's the same God that creates all religion. If you're a Christian, believe in your Christianity. Practice it in total. It works for you. If you're a Muslim, believe in your Muslim. Practice it in total. It works for you. Nobody should claim superiority over anyone because everybody is equal before God. Are you telling me that every Muslim that I goes to hellfire, are you telling me that all Christians that I goes to hellfire, is it not God that creates both Muslim and religion and Christianity? Is it not the same God that creates African tradition, which we have been practicing before the advent of colonialism? So why are we, why are we trying to be God over others? Nobody can be God over me. I am Ezekiel Kemba, one the supreme commander of all African ancestral kings. No human being can be God over me. Except God, the creator of the universe. And God talks to me directly. He reveals things to me. I speak by divine ordination. I'm a prophetic king. And I'm a healer. I heal by my African gifts and roots and leaves. Because that is what we are. There are some orthodox medicine you bring in Africa. It doesn't work. Because our tree is stronger than it. Ask questions. During the time of coronavirus, we Africans were drinking our local abo and we are living. Our local abo was helping us. So the integral part of life is culture and tradition and religion. As an HA man, I believe in my tradition and it works for me. I am a Dubai Zumezu. I am on the Zumezu. I control the Zumezu deity. And the Zumezu deity was created by God. The Zumezu means completion, totality. And the Zumezu is the tripartite nature of God. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is the Zumezu. It's a three in one, the Zumezu. So if you don't know, know it. He said, for I have come to perfect all I made. God did not say, or Christ did not say, I have come to destroy all I have made. He said, I came to bring perfection to humanity. So if God has come to destroy, I would have begun to listen now to those that say religion is perfect and tradition is falsehood. To whatever religion you believe, it will work for you. Because he said, whatever your heart believes in works for you. There is a divine power. There is a superman. And that superman is God. That divine power is God. So if you're a Brazilian, if you're an Indian, if you're an American, if you're an Asian, if you're an African, hold on to your tradition. Use it to worship God, the creator of the universe. Don't let anybody tell you that your own is Antichrist. Don't let anybody tell you that your own is falsehood. Provided you are using it to worship God, the creator, only one God. 
Because what we are seeing today is a clear revelation. If tradition is a transmission of custom and belief from generation to generation, let me ask us one question. Did, do you know Christ Jesus? Have you seen him in person? Do you know Apostle Paul? Do you know Apostle Peter? Are they not gone generations? We are their acts not transmitted through the acts of the apostles to our generation. Is it not from generation to generation? We are you there? Was your father there? Was your grandfather there? They are not there. They were not there. We are hearing history because we believe in the system and we are worshiping. That is how it is in Africa. We were not there. We heard what our ancestors did and we believe. And we are following. Because if we go to Israel, Christ is an ancestor. Apostle Paul is an ancestor. Apostle Peter is an ancestor. Timothy is an ancestor because they are no longer living. So in my own place, my great grandfather, Mwajiwambo, is an ancestor. My grandfather, St. Charles Oneche, is an ancestor. And my father, late Eze John Oneche, is an ancestor. And that is how it is with you. Your generational decades of lineage are your ancestors. So let no one confuse you into believing that what you do is fetish, is a lie. It's not fetish. The only thing we condemn is sacrifices. It is finished. Because human sacrifice is finished. For the fact that Christ stretched his hands on the cross and said it is finished, you shall not sacrifice human being again for anything. He said, I made man in my own image. So for the fact that Christ, that God that made man his own image, came in the image of his son as Christ and sacrificed his life. No more human sacrifice. For atonement of sins or for anything. If you dare sacrifice a human being for anything, you are doomed for life. Let me make it clearly. For that you cannot create, that shall not take. You cannot create human lives. So you shouldn't take it. So any cultural tradition that supports human sacrifice is abominable. I, as the Kemba one, the Supreme Commander of African Ancestral Peace, condemns it in total. And that is why we have championed the cause of every traditional belief that promotes human sacrifice. And it is now a thing of the past. Because the perfection that God talked about is what we are perfecting. So religion is the perfection of tradition. As religious beings, we are now working towards perfecting tradition. So, religion is a doctrine. Religion is a doctrine. Now, the belief of practicing that doctrine is tradition. You wake up in the morning, you pray. You pray, you hand over your day to God. You go to church. When you enter, you need and you pray. You sing, the priest come, administer the Psalms or the scriptures, and you listen. After listening, you pray. You give thanksgiving, and you go. Is that not a tradition? That is a tradition. Because you do it consistently every Sunday. And when you die, your children continue from where you stop. And when your children die, your grandchildren continue from where you stop. And when your grandchildren die, your great-grandchildren continue from where you stop. So that is tradition. The transmission of custom and belief from generation to generation is tradition. And that's why you're practicing in churches. And it must, because the same way you pray this Sunday or this Friday, it must. It's the same way you pray next week. It's the same way you pray the other week. You can also pray from year to year, from month to month, 
Do you change that style? You don't change it. So but that is a tradition. So, so let us appreciate whatever tradition you uphold, my dear, appreciate it. Okay, together for good to them that believe. Are you seeing that the belief comes in now? All things work together for good to them that believe. And the scripture goes ahead to say that the earth is the law. The earth is the law. And the fullness therein. So if God says that the earth is his and the fullness of the earth, do you want a man to say fullness? I am the commander of my house. I built my house. I have all the properties inside of it. And now you come to ad advise me not to value my property? That is madness. Because I, I went through pains to build my house. I married my wife. I gave birth to my kids. And I not taught them. And you come to tell me not to value my kids. You must be insane. You must be crazy. It is irritating to believe such. So deceit. I value all my children equally. I love them equally. Whether you're a male or a female, I love them equally. So that love cannot be sentimental. So whether religious belief as a Hindu, as a Christian, or a Muslim, or an African traditionist, they all are the fullness of the earth. And they are of the Lord. You should not condemn any. The one you believe in, practice it. And leave others. Live and let's live. Don't create superiority. You, now, you are not God and don't try to be God. Don't. He said to those that claim they have wisdom, I will take wisdom out of them. To those that feel they have knowledge, I will also take knowledge away from them. But to those that submit themselves in hunger for knowledge, I will give them knowledge. I will give them wisdom. And wisdom that passes all understanding. So who are you? To come and condemn me. To say what I'm doing is fetish. Your own is fetish too. Your own is fetish. If my own is fetish, your own is fetish. Because we don't have different gods. It's only one God that created all of us. So, our systems of worship might differ. But the person we worship to must be one. And he is one. And that is why he said the earth is the law and the fullness thereof. Now, those things that nature forbids, let me also come here. As Africans, we have our tradition, which is a part of our religion, which the religion of Christianity also supports. Thou shall not sleep with another man's wife, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal. That shall not commit abominable acts. That shall not envy another. That shall not be covetous. That shall not be greedy. That shall not show wickedness. Are these not the things the scriptures say you should not do? And these are the things the Bible forbids. And these are the things the tradition also forbids. So you cannot separate. They are inseparable. They are inseparable. So I will want to go back again to say, I am religious about my tradition. And I want you to join me in saying that you are religious about your tradition. Are we together? Yes, we are together. I so I want religious. us to say, I am religious about my tradition. I am a religious about my tradition. 
And I keep to the tradition of my religion. And I and keep, I keep to, to my tradition of my, my religion. religion. Perfect. And on this note, we are on the same page. So there should be no discrimination. There should be no segregation about religion and tradition. What's more, I bring you royal audience of the world through this medium and platform. Yes, you can, international. <laughs> As your grand people, I will always do my best to present life the way it is. In all sincerity and honesty, as a being created by God to unite the world. I am a global emperor of peace, a royal emperor of peace, and a global ambassador of the United Nations, whose watchword is to see that humanity is protected and built into perfection. Thank you once more for having wow. me, and thank wow. you for giving me wow, this wow, opportunity. Wow. Royal blessings. <laughs> And this is the stage one of your teaching, sir, because next month you are yes. coming back <laughs> to continue mm. where you <laughs> So Thank you. we really appreciate this teaching. It's an eye-opener to every one of us, because if we are talking about peace and want peace to reign in this world, then we need to have a better understanding of what we are actually doing better understanding of religion, better understanding of tradition. And when we have better understanding of this, then we will know how to treat other people. Then we will know how to respect other people. And then we will know how to add value to ourselves and add value to others. So, and who else can I call to come and explain and teach us on tradition? Of course, it's going to be the king in my country <laughs> of Nigeria. <laughs> and then we have, Thank to you. have him. And if there are questions, too, yes. anybody can ask questions. It's open. Yes. yes. So I'm are open we... to text questions. Yes. So I'm going to leave this time to say, if you have any questions, our king is ready to answer. So do you have questions? We are waiting. Please feel free to ask questions while he's still with us. Any questions? Okay. Do you have any questions? Oh, so we've all understood. Mutinta, Mutinta is raising her hand. <laughs> Mutinta Masowe. Okay, yes, please. He's ask from questions Zambia. from Zambia. He's, yes. Yes, ask questions. Uh, I thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the lovely talk. Um, I enjoyed it. And I uh, also want to thank um, Queen Elizabeth Lucas for this platform. Um, I, I just have one question on uh, culture. And uh, which one is greater and or how can you go about it? Which one is greater between culture and human rights? Because um, I believe we've seen quite a lot of incidences whereby certain um, traditional rulers, they would rather go against uh, human rights in the name of culture. And also, we find that at some point, maybe human rights uh, also can really come in and ignore every sense of culture in the community. So how do you balance it as an advocate? And how, which one can you pick sides from? Because I, I feel these two are quite, I think um, there's a thin line and they are inter, uh, intertwined. So I, I would like maybe his, um, his Royal Highness to shed more light on that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, I got your question clearly. And it's a line we are talking about human right culture. Mm -hmm. Now, how did culture come about? Some culture came about because culture is the people's way of life. The totality of their activity is culture. And in Africa and in other words, not just Africa, because I'm a proud African, there are cultures in some climes that 
infringes on human rights. And how came about that court or any trace in history? When the colonies came to Africa, they enslaved Africans. And the culture is a cultural divide and rule system. If you don't believe in my own, I will arrest you and will deal with you, whether it is against your human right or not. So that one was not our original culture. But by the infiltration of colonies, we began to go by divide and rule. The monarchical system was a, consulta a consultative system where every family has a spokesman in the palace. Before a decision is taken by the king, they will go back to their families and hold meetings. And they, they, they will come with different views of what the family says to the king's palace. Now all the elders and the king's men and the chiefs will look at the different views and present a position to the king. And what the king does is to look at the popular opinion of the people and place his authority on it. Because his king speaks last in every discussion. So it is not the idea of the king, but the popular opinion of the people that rules in Africa. But when colonies came, they were not comfortable with that. They brought about divide and rule system. And that began to enslave us, enslave us, took away our human rights, and made us non-humans. We are classified as animals. So now that civilization has come, and we, the learned world, are saying, no, we can no longer take the enslavement. We began to pursue human rights. That is the initiation of human rights. That is the origination of human rights. Human rights didn't come just because of tradition. No, human rights came because of the event of enslavement. And people are saying, no, 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 we can no longer take it. That is how human rights came about. So some of those culture that was infiltrated into us began to enslave us. Equal opportunity for everybody. The girls, the boys, equal education opportunity, and all the things that the human rights projects and goals, states, so any culture that is not in line with human rights is not a super culture. And that, those are not the culture we're talking about. We are talking about a natural culture. Justice for all. Fairness for all. Orderliness in life. Promoting your ingenuity. Your originality. That is what we are talking about. So any culture that is not in line with human rights is not a, an original culture. It is a culture brought in by those who bacchanized us, by those who relegated us, by those who raped us on broad daylight, by those who took away our consciousness, by those who made us to lose value in life as humans. A lot of things happen. Okay, sir. I have Which I wouldn't want to recount as a historian. A lot of things happen. That when you begin to think that, you begin, you begin to get furious. So human right must be protected because human right has come to stay. And our culture protects human right. Except those cultures that were infiltrated, used to rape us and to maim us. So I enjoy you. I appreciate you in this very technical question. We must fight against anything that divorce us of our human right. Thank you once more. Okay. Um, before, you, before you leave, I know that our time has gone. There is also another important question on the chat uh, by Professor Dr. Vashun. And the question is, which one you think is better? Which one you, no which, which one you think is better to believe and follow since everyone is doing or to seek answers and be confirmed? 
You say, Shall I repeat the question? Shall I repeat the question? I got your question. Okay, okay. He so said, which oh, one oh, is better one to is believe better. and follow since everyone is doing before, it? Before God, no one is perfect. He said, for there is no perfect before God except God himself. There is no, no, nothing created on the surface of God that is perfect except the creator himself. He said, I made man in my own image, but I regretted making man. So nothing is perfect. What makes everything perfect is the spirit of God. So if you are practicing African tradition, bring the spirit of God into it, it becomes perfect. If you are practicing Christianity, bring the spirit of God, there it will be perfect. If you are Muslim, bring the spirit of God, because they call God Allah. Bring the spirit of Allah, there it will be perfect. It is only God that makes everything perfect. Because when you have the spirit of God in you, you will do the right thing. Whether you are practicing Africa, there are some African traditions that is more holier than the priest in the church. Let me tell you the truth. There are more religious, perfect beings in African tradition. So why are they like that? Because they have invited the Spirit of God to guide them. They say, I will send you a comforter. And in all you do, he will guide you. So whether you are practicing this is African tradition. Walk with the spirit of God. Because God is supreme. Think Christianity is perfect. That is your own opinion. It's not my opinion. Because Christianity was brought to us in Africa and we accepted it and we are following it. And it's working for us. So I will not because I believe in Christianity and I will tell the Muslim that it's not perfect. It is not right. It is not right. Because it is working for him. And it is what my own is working for me. So we should live to tolerate, to tolerate and enjoy others to tolerate. Thank you. If you have any other question, please put it on the chat box and then we might find a way of getting back to you. But the most important thing is that King promise is coming back next month so that we he can continue with this teaching and then you can prepare your questions for him so i believe that would be good for you to come back next month to come and listen to our excellency king Pro Pro prophet ambassador onyeche promise of being from united Thank from you. united kingdom of uh, Nigeria. Hola, <laughs> Juan Yes, you can international mindset and transformation masterclass. With different teachers, different mentors, different professors from across the globe. Interesting, informative, and life transforming. It must watch masterclass.